Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to run some more tests on a Raspberry Pi 5. Firstly, we're going to try out video editing in Caden Live, and indeed this whole video is being edited on a Raspberry Pi 5. Secondly, we're going to try to make a video call, which really needs to work if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 5 as a small desktop PC. And I know a lot of people are interested in that. And finally, because I've had a lot of requests, I'm going to try some experiments with passive cooling. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we are back on a Raspberry Pi 5, and as you can see, we're running with an SSD connected to one of its USB 3 ports with both Raspberry Pi OS and our video files on this drive, which will give us the best performance for video editing. And in the future, we'll be able to use an M.2 NVMe drive connected to the Pi 5's PCIe connector. Over on my desktop, here we are, I've installed Caden Live, and I did this in a terminal using the command sudo apt install Caden Live. So if we go to the menu over here, you'll find that uh, under sound and video, you can see Caden Live, there it is. We'll run it up, and here it is coming up on the Pi 5, nice and fast. Control Shift F just brings us full screen. And I now go to our sample edit, which is sitting uh, down there, the sample edit I use on lots of different SBCs in testing. You'll see we've got a bit of a problem because in the uh, project monitor up here, we can just see green, which is clearly not what these clips are actually of. So there's a problem here, and we'll therefore come out of Caden Live uh, like that. And you might be wondering what is going on. Well, the issue is that the Pi 5 only runs the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. And this is based on Debian 12 or Bookworm and launches in mid October 2023. And this Debian 12 version of Raspberry Pi OS uses Wayland rather than the older Xorg for its display server. And this does cause problems for some existing applications, including Caden Live, as we just saw. But do not fear, as I reached out to Raspberry Pi, who came up with a solution of running Caden Live using XWayland, which is an emulation layer to provide compatibility for applications that currently only work properly with XORG. And if we bring up a terminal like that, this is the command we need to execute. So uh, let's do just that. Here we go. Caden Live is coming up again. Very exciting. There it is. Control Shift F. And if we go back to our sample edit, which is sitting uh, still there, and oh look, we've got a picture. We can see ducks and stuff. And uh, this works very, very well indeed. Let's just play this edit. You can see normal playback is absolutely fine. We, we would kind of expect that. It was on a Pi 4. But when we get to the dissolve, we get to the transition. It's beautifully smooth. This is better than I've seen on any ARM-based single board computer, with the exception of the Orange Pi 5, which uh, works just as well, as far as I can see anyway, as the, the Raspberry Pi 5. So uh, that's pretty good. And you might be thinking you don't want to launch Caden Live from a terminal all the time. So let's just come out of this like that and uh, quit. There we are and close down the terminal. And you might have noticed I put myself an icon on the desktop so I can just uh, run up the file and execute it like that. And it'll run up Caden Live just as we just did. There we go. And if we just go back to our test edit, because we've got more business with it, because I'm sure you want to know how long it'll take to render out this test. We've done it before in many other single board computers. So let's just go to project and a render, where I've got set up the script for the render. And let's just remind ourselves how long it did take on some other computers, where a Pi 4 took two minutes and 19 seconds, an Orange Pi 5, 52 seconds, and a BMAX B1 Plus X86 Mini PC took one minute and 45 seconds. So let's try this on the uh, Raspberry Pi 5. We'll uh, start the script, but uh, it'll take a second or two, so we will uh, speed on through. And here we are. It's finished in two minutes and eight seconds. I'm surprised at that. It is a better score than a Raspberry Pi 4, but clearly not much better. 
the uh, performance on the timeline here in uh, Caden Live on a Raspberry Pi 5 is massively better than on a Raspberry Pi 4. But that render time, well, all I can do is show the results that, uh, that come up, and that's the result we've just got. Maybe running Caden Live using the, the fudge for Xorg and Xway, then maybe that's affecting performance. I don't know. Anyway, that is how Caden Live is performing at the moment. And the other thing I want to do here is to show you the other important edit, which is, of course, the edit for this particular video, if I can actually bring that up. It looks like I can. And let's just uh, use the whole uh, area to see the edit. And uh, this is the video you're currently watching, or at least the start of it. It finishes here right now, but I'll be adding to it, obviously, with this bit. Oh, it's very confusing, isn't it? And uh, I would point out that the actual composite for the opening shot here, I did do this in Adobe After Effects. I'm only here using Caden Live and a Raspberry Pi 5 to replace Premiere Pro in the production of this video, not all of my video tools, but uh, it is working perfectly well. And uh, oh, I should also point out I'm using proxies in Caden Live as I always do on the lower end hardware. If we look at proxy clips here, they are enabled as you can see. And uh, we should just, of course, check this is actually working. Let's just show you a bit playing. Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Yes, it's working. I have no doubt I can complete my mission and edit this video here on a Raspberry Pi 5. So let's now move on to another test. Right, we're now going to try video calling on a Raspberry Pi 5. And I've arranged to have a call with Kevin, who runs this YouTube channel here, all about robots and also single board computers and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, Kevin made a lot of content around the launch of the Raspberry Pi 5, as you can see, including the interview with Evan Upton and an interview with myself. So let's go across to uh, MS Teams, where I've got a call set up with Kevin down there. As you can see, I'll just click on that and join the call like that. And let's just give ourselves a bit more space on the screen F11. And as you can see, here I am. Hello. And I'm currently on a camera which is connected to the Pi via USB. It's actually a camcorder, but it's appearing to the Pi as if it's a webcam. I'm simply using a camcorder for various technical reasons in terms of uh, being able to record the audio and things separately in terms of making a video. But as far as the Pi is concerned, it's just got a webcam connected for holding a, a video call. And if you're wondering, how am I wearing headphones? The answer is the headphones are plugged into my monitor. They can't be plugged into the Pi because it hasn't got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So what should happen in a few minutes time is that Kevin will call in. In fact, I should join first, shouldn't I? I'm able to go into the meeting. I should know how this works. I live my life in MS Teams, but there we are. And uh, here it is. Oh, look, it's me on the screen. So as I was saying, in a few minutes time, Kevin should be calling in and Microsoft will stop giving us lots of messages. So let's uh, speed forward in time. And here we are back again. I'm just going to uh, record and transcribe this call. So that is a good. And admit Kevin. Let's see what happens. And things are happening. Kevin, can you hear Hello, me? Hello, hi there, Chris. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay as well. We are holding a video call Fantastic. on the Raspberry Pi 5. Wow. And um, according to Microsoft, I should let you know I'm recording this call. You probably knew that anyway. <laughs> and, uh, Excellent. Wel welcome, closer. welcome to the channel. You know, you're only the second person to be on the channel other than me. And the first one was Eben Upton, who I, I know you interviewed recently. Wow, I'm very honoured, Chris. Thank you for having me on. It's um, we we seem to have a slight lag. Actually, it's not absolutely perfect. It's um, maybe the pie is struggling that's, a little. That's probably my wife. Let me connect a cable and ah, see if that improves things. Let's see. It might not be the pie. It might be the other end. So um, let's try the wire. Yes, I don't think it's the pie. I think it's... yes, we were, we there won't we blame the pie. That's um, so uh, as I said, you. Right, I'm now connected by a wire. So... Well, that'll be a bit uh, a strong connection. Do you know? I don't know which of us has got more wires either end. I think we're both surrounded by <laughs> by wires, as I say. I mean, you talked to Evan before the pie came out, didn't you? That was must have been an interesting day. 
it was a very interesting day. Yeah, I travelled down the day before. It's quite a journey from where I live up north to uh, to Cambridge. All right. Yes. Um, so I sort of stayed overnight and then uh, went to Pie Towers at first thing in the morning. So yes, it was a very exciting day. Set up all the cameras, all the equipment. Wanted yeah. to make sure I got plenty of different angles, mm -hmm. and then uh, had at it with my questions. Fantastic. And uh, I'll I'll drop a link to that in the in the video description, and there'll probably be a card somewhere around on the screen as we can do as well on this one little thing called YouTube. Thank you. But uh, it seems to be this works, doesn't it? As far, from my experience here, this is just a normal, a normal call. Yes, it's a very, very smooth video, very, very crisp. It seems to be very high quality as well. There's absolutely no lag of the image. Um, so yeah, and I'm running on the Raspberry Pi 5 as well. If I just tilt oh, my right. camera down here, you can see on the wow. desk, I have my Raspberry Pi just here. So we're wow. working Pi to Pi. You can't say more than that, can you? I think we have therefore proved categorically it is possible to do that. One of those really important things for if you're going to use a Python desktop computer to hold a video call. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, in that case, thanks for the call. I'm sure we'll keep in touch as we do on all things Pi. And uh, I'm now going to sign off to you now and just show the audience watching this, um, the, the recording I've made to see if that's worked as well. But I imagine it has. But uh, thanks for joining us here on Explaining Computers. Thanks, Chris. Bye for now. Bye. And there we are. And if I just go to the right place, I should be able to find my recording of that call. And here we are, I've found the file, so we can just play this along. And uh, this is what MS Teams recorded. And things are happening. Kevin! Hello, Kevin. hi there, Chris. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay as well. We are holding a video call on the Raspberry Pi 5. And uh, there we are. I will say no more. I think we've had a very successful test. Greetings. Shall we turn our attention to cooling? And here our Raspberry Pi 5 is using one of the two official cooling solutions, one of which is the official case, which is fitted with a fan like this and comes with a heatsink. And then the other solution, as we're looking at right here, is the heatsink with a fan mounted on it. And I would point out that this is the best 30mm fan I've ever tested on SBC. It's properly temperature controlled. It doesn't just go on and off as they do on some SBCs. It's speed controlled by the Pi. So if you're worrying about a Pi having a fan and being noisy, don't worry about that. The official fan is very good indeed. This said, lots of people have asked me about potentially passively cooling a Raspberry Pi 5. And so I'm going to run three tests. First of all, we will test the Pi with the fan and the heatsink to get a baseline. And then secondly, I'll just disconnect the fan and we'll test the Pi with just the, the heatsink without the fan running. And if you're wondering, could we use a Pi 5 without any cooling solution at all? The answer is no. I've seen one test of that. The Pi will throttle after about a minute. So I'm not going to try that test. I'm only going to test just with this particular heatsink without the fan. And then for our third test, I'm sure some of us can imagine a situation where the Pi has got a large passive cooler, or a large heatsink on it. And you think back to some of the SPCs I've looked at in the past. Here's a Nano Pi 4, which has a massive cooler connected to it, where the SOC here is on the base of the board. And I've several times on the channel brought in my Raspberry Pi 4 in this heatsink case. The base of this is really just to look nice, but the, on top of it here, this is a very large heatsink, which passively cools a Pi. I really like this type of case. And it's not difficult to imagine this type of case, but designed for a Raspberry Pi 5. It will be slightly difficult because, of course, there's lots of connectors, more on the Pi 5 and the Pi 4 they'd have to work around, but something with a lot of metal, maybe a bit higher going across the ports or something, that could well work. And I can't just fit this onto a Pi 5 because the lugs on the bottom of this wouldn't be in the right positions, but what I can do is to bring in these heat sinks, which I've used before on a Pi 3 and a Pi 4. This one's even got a, a little a copper shim on the base. So I've got various bits of metal available, which will allow me to mount one of these, hopefully this one, the bigger one, on the Pi 5. So that will be our third test. Anyway, let's start out with the, the heat sink and fan combination. So let's go across to the desktop. And here in Genie, I've written this little bash script, quite similar to ones I've used many times before on Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s. And what this basically does is to uh, clear the screen and then to start a loop 
which will run for uh, 10 cycles. And inside this loop, it's going to take a temperature measurement. And then it's going to run a sysbench command, which will uh, factor prime numbers to a maximum of 50,000, but constrained to a time limit of 120 seconds, two minutes. And also it's got its output suppressed. So the only thing we'll see on the screen here is the temperature measurements. So this will go on for the 10 cycles and then finally we'll take a final temperature measurement. So we're going to end up with 11 temperature measurements on the screen, two minutes between each for our 20 minute test. So let's uh, close this down and go to the terminal and execute the script. We're starting with an idle of 41.1 degrees, but let's now speed on through our 20 minute test. And there we are with the uh, smell of warm electronics in the air. Our baseline test is complete and the uh, stock fan and heatsink have clearly done their job very well. The pie is not throttled, which will be at about 80 plus degrees. It's stabilized at about, what, 57, 58 degrees. And if we look across to the pie, we can see that its fan is now spinning. It's been doing so since about the first minute and it's doing so completely silently, but uh, regardless, let's now move on to test passive cooling. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we are. The Pi is now running again with its fan disconnected. So let's go across to the desktop where I've let things cool down. The Pi is now idling along as it was at the start of the last test at about the same temperature, which is not surprising because the fan wasn't spinning at the start of the last test, so it's effectively identical so far. And uh, let's run the test again and see what results we get. So uh, there we go. This is our first test of passive cooling. And there we are. It is finished. The Pi, I'm sure, is relieved about that. And we have managed to stay below the throttling temperature. We're running at about a 15 degrees higher than we were with the um, fan. And of course, we don't know how far we can go if we want beyond 20 minutes. But uh, this isn't a bad result, although do remember we've not got a case on the Pi here. And if we go across to the Pi itself, I would point out if I try to touch the heatsink, I can barely do it. It really is very, I would describe as dangerously hot. So let's move on to see if we can test out a better passive cooling solution. And here we are with the Pi equipped with the large heatsink I showed you earlier. This is a put on using thermal tape. I've been very careful not to short things out, but I would absolutely not recommend you try this unless you're being very, very careful. This is simply a test to see to what extent we can get a better passive cooling result. But uh, with that said, let's go across to the desktop. Here we are. And uh, you'll see our idle, if you just look at the top corner here, is only about 27, 28. This has been running quite a while, more than it ran for the previous test. So the heatsink so far is doing okay. So uh, anyway, let's uh, press enter and uh, speed on through for our third set of test results. And there we are. What a result. Only slightly warmer at the end of the test than we saw with the official cooler with its fan. And in fact, we might even have been approaching a point of stability. Who knows? But uh, regardless, there must be fantastic potential here for third party manufacturers to make passive coolers for the Raspberry Pi 5. And let's put all of our results on a table like this. Great to see. Clearly a good result for the custom heatsink. And I'd forgotten how much I enjoy doing Raspberry Pi temperature tests. The Raspberry Pi began its life as an educational tool that soon found application in many maker and industrial projects. But today, the Raspberry Pi 5 is an ARM SBC that can also be used for mainstream desktop computing. Talking of which, the edit for this video is now nearing completion in Caden Live on the Pi 5, and based on tests I've done so far, I think it'll render out in just under an hour. I obviously can't tell you exactly how long this video will take to render because I'm still shooting this video, but I will put that information in the video description in case you're interested. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh, <laughs>